So in the last video, I showed you how to create the simple laser beam particle system using a material and the particle system editor. In this video, I'll be showing you how to attach this laser beam to your character and make him have the ability to emit it. So now I have my material and I have my particle system, and it's all looking quite good. But now we need to set it up on my character, because otherwise it's just kind of useless and sitting there. So, let's get into that. So let's go to blueprints and third person character. And this is your default thing that will load up. Now what we're going to create first is the charge, because the charge is very simple, but it's one of the more fun aspects, because we're wanting the player to feel like they have power in this laser, because it has to actually charge before they can use it. So I'm just going to search for this left mouse button, and I'm going to grab that. And right now, that's about all I can do, because we need to actually create the function. So I'm going to create a new function, and this is going to be beam charge, and I'm going to need a new variable, and I'm going to need int beam charge rate. And I'm going to set this to integer because I'm thinking 0 to 100, you don't really need a float, just use an integer. So on beam charge, all I'm really doing is adding 1 to the beam. So I need to get how much I've charged up, and I need to get an integer add an integer, so I'm going to increase it by 1 every time, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my charge rate to this new value, and there you go, you're increasing your charge rate over time, but now we need it to actually be able to do something, so I'm going to want a branch, okay, and my branch is going to say, if integer is not equal, if it's not equal to 100, then I want to set my particle system to zero, to nothing. So we need to create the particle system. So I'm going to add a component, and I'm just going to add a particle system. I'm going to call this laser emit. And I'm going to parent that to my mesh. Now I'm going to turn off real time here to stop the animation from playing and possibly screwing up the rotation. And I'm just going to bring this in front of the character a bit. Turn off snapping. And his chest generally when animating stays around there. So that's a good point to have it. Now you can use sockets like I've used in my previous tutorials for equipping. However I've always found sockets need offsetting so for this very simple basis, I'm just going to use it like this. And this will cause the beam to emit from here. So now what I can do is I can get my laser emit. And I'm going to set this. And I'm going to set template to none. Now, when you've got a branch, you always want your outcome to be true. So if you don't want anything to happen when it's false, then you just leave it. I also did have another function for true. So I'm actually going to swap this round and change that back to equal. And I want it to be 100 because I want my positive outcome to be that they're able to emit the beam. So I'm going to clear my timer. Now we've not set a timer yet, but we are going to and we're going to need to clear it. So I'm going to clear the timer and the function I want to clear is this one, beam charge. Now, I just copy and pasted that in because you've got to get the wording exactly right so you get the right function. So now what we're saying is charge it up. Does it equal 100? If it does, clear this timer because we don't want to charge it anymore. If it doesn't, then make sure my template is set to nothing. Again, you don't even really need this if you just start with having it set to zero. So now, when pressed, I want to call my beam charge function by setting a timer. I'm just going to put that function name back in there. I'm going to have it call every 0.1 of a second because I'm only adding 1 and I need it to loop until we're at 100. On release, clear that timer and I want to set int beam charge rate back to 0. So now we can charge up our power beam and we can decharge it. Now we want to actually be able to use it. Now you'll see in the last one I used event tick, because like I said I wanted it to update every frame, 
not over a time basis, because if we're just going off the frames that the player can see, we just need it to update constantly. So obviously frames can update very quick. When you got 60 frames per second, you got one frame every one sixtieth of a second. If the player's frame rate is fluctuating from like 48 to 60 to 30, then you still need it to update at the right amount each time without having to change that time value dependent on the frames. Event tick, it does that for you. So if your game's running at 20 frames per second, it'll do it every frame. So every 1 20th of a second for that period of time, it's running at 20. And so on and so forth. So the first thing's first, I want to check if the character's moving. It's pretty important. So I'm going to hold B and get a branch. And now what I want to do is I want to get my character and I just want to get velocity. So I'm targeting myself and I want my velocity. Now anyone who's tried to use the get velocity before, they know you can't really use it in many ways as a vector. So we need to get the length. So I'm just going to type here and get vector length. Okay, so I just put in length there. As you can see, it's not called get vector length. So if you looked for get vector length, nothing would come up. But now we have this float value. I want to know if it's equal to 100. I just want to set this to zero. My mind was elsewhere there. So now we're saying, is the character standing still? If yes, then do what we want. Because again, I want my positive outcome, what I want to happen, to be true. What I don't want to happen, so I don't want the player to be moving, I'm having it at false. Now we need to check if the beam's actually ready to use. So now we need a new branch, and I want that equal integer. Equal integer, and I want to get my int beam charge rate, and I want to check if it's equal to 100. Again, my positive outcome is true, I want it to be equal to 100. I'm not going to worry about doing the false yet, I'm just going to do my true. So on true, I'm equal to 100, and I'm standing still. So the next thing is, I want my line trace. Line trace by channel, and what we want is first off, we want our location. So I'm going to get my laser emit, and then get the world location. And plug that into the start. So we're going to need to move these up. And then I also want my forward vector, because I want to know whether to emit it in front of me, or behind me, because you've got to remember, and on a third person blueprint specifically, the camera could be turned the opposite way to the player. What we want to do is we want to multiply this by a float. Because we want to say I want it to end this distance away. And we want to get our vector, and we want to add them together. And have that as our end. So what I'm saying is, I want to multiply this value by 5000, and I want to add it to my current location, so I want it to end 5,000 Unreal units in front of me, which is about 500 meters, which I'd say is pretty far for a laser beam anyway. So now we have that, we need to see if we're impacting anything. So I want to branch, hold B, left click, and I want this return value. This return value is checking, well as it says here, returns the first blocking hit encountered. So if it hits something, then we need to sort that out, we need its location. If it doesn't hit anything, then we can just use the value we've calculated here for the end. So I need to break my hit result here, and we're going to need a new variable. And we're going to need target, laser, target. And I want that as my vector. So now I'm going to set my laser target on true, equal to the location of whatever we hit. On false, I'm going to want to set it to this value. So I'm just going to drag and drop that in. So, so far, what we have is, are we still? Yes. Okay, have we charged our beam? Yes. So let's send out a line trace and see what happens. Now, has our line trace hit anything? Yes. Okay, what's its location? That's where we want our laser beam to stop. Or, no, it hasn't hit anything, so we want it to stop 500 meters ahead, or 5,000 unreal units. So now, we need to actually be able to spawn our source. We want to set the source point of this laser emit. So I need this in first. Set source. Beam source point, because again, okay, as you can see, it already has this laser emit, so it doesn't need this. In our particle system, we have a source and a target node, and these are set by the user. So we can plug them both into there and just use this world location as the new source point, because either way, we're setting the source and target, just the value of said point is going to be different. Set beam target point. Again, it's already referencing my laser emit, so I don't need to drag that in. 
and instead I want my laser target variable and plug that in. Now as this can change I'm not going to directly plug it in from the well first things first is we haven't got it to set to visible so I'm going to set the visibility I click both options here and that seems to work okay so it's taken a bit longer than I thought to charge her which I believe is the issue yep so there's my draw debug type and as you can see it just takes a little while to charge up and on the beam charge I'm setting my template to nothing so we need to actually change that when it's true set my laser emit to my laser. Now we have a laser to emit and when we finish charging boom there's your laser. Let go and it would normally disappear I've just not set that up yet and there we go. There's our beam it's set up. Okay now we just need to make sure the beam actually disappears so we can see everything else in action. So to do that is pretty simple. So on false when we want moving we want to set the charge rate back to zero. So on false from here, I'm going to set it to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my laser emit and I'm going to set its template back to nothing. And I'm going to have this come from false into this template and also connect it up from here. Now the reason for this is just because my charge rate isn't equal to 100, I don't want to set the charge rate to zero because then you'll have an infinite loop. However, if the charge rate is zero, I still don't want that particle template. And now when I move, the beam disappears. Charge again, let go, the beam disappears. So that is making the beam appear and disappear from my character using line traces. Okay, so in the next video, I'll be showing you how to make the laser beam affect and damage a simple enemy AI pawn. It would just be the cube that I used in the example. Okay, if you enjoyed this part of the video, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If your opinions are otherwise, or you have any questions, comments, or advice, just leave it in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.